welcome to Highly Questionable. I'm Bomani Jones. This is Gonzalo, and in Miami, we call this color 7 and 9. This is Israel Gutierrez. What's on the show today? Joey Bosa, San Diego Chargers. Not a marriage that seems like it's going to happen. There you go. Did Hop Solo really deserve a six-month suspension for calling Sweden a bunch of cowards? Thank you, USA Soccer, because what the hell else are we going to talk about right now if you didn't decide to grandstand on Hope Solo? Because that's what this is, grandstanding. Hope Solo said that Sweden played like a bunch of cowards, being the sore loser that she's been since she joined the national team. They have terminated her contract, suspended her for six months, which is really only a couple of games, and that's where the problem comes up for me. This is so apparently just the show of doing so, not about anything of any level of I hope it worked for you. Yeah, this one's a real head scratcher here because if you look at just what she did, like Bo said, just calling the team a bunch of cowards and talking and listening to the rest of the quote where she's just pumping her own team up and talking about how courageous they were, that would barely get looked at if it was somebody other than Hope Solo. And I'm not even talking about a man. I'm talking about somebody else on that team, if Megan Rapino says that or anything like that. So this seems to be a collection of, of issues that she's had, and this is the penalty that they're providing. And, and regardless of that, it means it's only two meaningless games potentially that she might miss. She has this large penalty on her resume, and even somebody with Hope Solo's background cannot be happy about that. Well, she had a chance to take over the game. You know, she never did. She should have pushed that ball around all over the field. She just take there, you know, guarding that net. You know, that's not the way you're going to win games, you know. If you know that the other team is playing that kind of defense, you got to come out and you got to help your teammates. Yeah, Hope Solo, go score some goals because that's what you're there for. That's right. <laughs> no, it's wrong. <laughs> Papi has spoken. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Whose side should fans be on in the Joey Bosa and Chargers contract battle? Hey, thank you, Chargers and Joey Bosa, because what the hell else would we be talking about if you guys weren't in this silly <laughs> be talking about if you guys weren't in this silly game of chicken that you were playing? And on one hand, it is silly. The Chargers are being silly because all they're really worried about is structure and how this all goes down the line for them with the next person that they negotiate with. With Joey Bosa, it's fair to ask, do you need that other side of the signing bonus right now? Is the offset language that big of a deal? Fans, in the end, are only going to be mad when Joey Bosa shows up and isn't playing very well. And they're going to point the finger at anybody they can get a finger on, but only one of them is going to be wearing a jersey. Now, I think naturally where the fans go with this is they are going to blame the player. They are going to look at the San Diego Chargers side of this and show them and say, hey, the money's there, the guaranteed money's there. Uh, everything seems to be there for you, and they're not going to look at the minor details. They're going to say, hey, Joey Bosa, go out there and prove you're worth that. But you have to wonder, even if you're a San Diego Chargers fan, why this happens to the Chargers, why a team decides to go public with this negotiation. If they can't even settle this with this draft pick, how are they going to get themselves a new stadium in San Diego, which they're still trying to do? So there's a lot going on in San Diego, and if I'm a Chargers fan, I'm not blindly blaming the player on this one. The Chargers, the Chargers, the Chargers. That name sounds familiar to me. Are they still in the NFL? <laughs> <laughs> you they wouldn't have, know it. They kind of evaporated for relevance, right? They're as relevant as the Broncos are, because you might be trying to watch the Broncos on television. Should Johnny Football go play in the CFL if they want him? I don't think that anything that Johnny Manziel does at this point is going to convince any NFL executive that he should be put back into the NFL. Whether it be if he goes to rehab and finds a way to, to prove that he's clean, whether it be that he goes to Canada and plays decent football, because let's be honest, he was a question mark coming into the league, and then the biggest headache the league has had over, what, the last five years or so. And so I do think that regardless of what he does, cannot get back in the good graces of the NFL. Look around this league. Look around this league just for a second. Johnny Manziel has three good games in a row in Canada. Someone will be trying to put him on a depth chart. They will try to find a way to make it so he doesn't have to take a drug test so nothing would fall through because quarterbacks are so scarce. Now, my thing with Manziel is, do you want to play football or not? Or is it that you want to play in the NFL, like you want to be on that stage? Because if you actually want to play football, based on the little bit I know about Canadian football, it seems like he could be pretty good up there. He might not be great, but he could be pretty good. And if playing football is the thing he wants to do go to the place where somebody actually wants you to play football because right now that ain't in america three good games is going to get you three, to trust him again three uh, look man three good mm. games hey five good games got kirk cousins 20 million dollars you think he can't get johnny manzel a uh, invite little different come on johnny this is the opportunity that you have been waiting for you go to canada you've got a hell of a season there and you know what 
You might come down here in Miami, you know, you might come to Miami because the clock is running out on Tannehill, you know. He has his feet to the fire now, you know. If he doesn't perform this season, he's out. Okay, so one city that Manziel really shouldn't be coming to, that that would be Miami. Let me be clear about this. They might call him, but that would be the worst idea ever. Should David Sills be a cautionary tale for young recruits? Okay, you may remember David Sills, but not by name. Remember that time somebody let Lane Kiffin be the head coach of a major college program and he made a scholarship offer to a 13-year-old? David Sills is that 13-year-old. Now, his story's gotten out. Bleacher Report had this about how he wound up getting hurt while he was in high school. Then he winds up at West Virginia because USC said, actually, we don't think you're that good, so we're not going to give you an offer. He goes to West Virginia. West Virginia wants him to be a wide receiver. Now he's going through the JUCOs and the cost cautionary tale really is the margins are very very thin here what you're going to be at 13 really doesn't have much bearing on what you're going to be at 17 and if you get hurt at 16 it can all fall apart just that fast yeah there's a lot of things going on around here there's a lot of blame to to be placed in any direction whether you've got sills who committed as a seventh grader knowing that a coach's shelf life in a university is probably not going to be that long and of course you have lane kiffin who decided to take a chance on a seventh grader based on what, like a 30 minute conversation perhaps and a little bit of video. And so I don't think that him going to another school and saying, okay, now all of a sudden you're a wide receiver because you were a great QB prospect when you were in seventh grade should be that big of a shock to the system. Like you really should be able to adjust a little bit just because one coach told you in seventh grade, you're this great prospect does not mean that things can't change for you. Hey Dave, this is what you gotta do. You go down to Alabama and you find that Kiffin and you said, yeah. they you owe me well, a job. Yeah. You know, that's what you do. Yeah, that's a job interview right there. I think Lake Kiffin probably thinks that's his name by now, though. <laughs> Should all those major league teams still go watch Tebow's workout after seeing these swings? So how many of these teams, 20 major league teams, go out to see a baseball player who hasn't played baseball in 11 years? Um, I don't know if you can really judge him based on a workout anyway, but there is some video of his swing oh, here. Oh, you have seen this? No. Here's the swing. It's slow motion. Hmm. What was he doing? I don't know. I think it's kind of unfair for us to even call that a swing. Yeah. There didn't appear to be any swing. It was actually more like a check swing. And my question, 20 teams are going to go to Los Angeles to see him. How many of those scouts just wanted a free trip to L.A.? And how many of them thought about putting in their two weeks? Because this is a farce. And who are those 10 teams that aren't going to see them? My guess is those 10 teams might be in playoff position and have better things to do. Hey, Tim, I thought that you were tough. You know, you got to stay inside that batter's box and get hit by that ball and get, get down to first base. You got to get to first base. Remember, you know, if you get hit by a, by a baseball, it's the same as getting a hit. You know, you got to get to first base. I don't know. Did you see where that ball was coming? Which direction <laughs> jutted out first? I believe it was kind of a sensitive area. You yeah, don't it's get okay. Hit <laughs> coming up next on Highly Questionable. Oh! Oh! oh. My son, Stevie Show is presented by Modelo Especial, brew with a fighting spirit since 1925. Brought to you by Modelo Especial. Time to play the game that likes to be tickled. Do you question? <laughs> you give us topics <laughs> and events, and we tickle them again. Do you question if this was the first try? So... This is Drake. Hey. <laughs> Even the reaction wasn't very genuine. There's no way that that didn't take at least 15 times. That was probably the equivalent of Chris Birdman Anderson's dunk contest from a few years back where it was embarrassing, but hey, you only have to post the one. Y'all let this dude be the number one rapper in the game. <laughs> Not right, right? There's room for one of these, right? You can have him, and he's got some shows, and a lot of girls show up. Look, there's room for one of those. Y'all made him the dude in the game, and history will never forgive you for that. I love Drake. Well, he's better from half court than he's from three. Oh, yeah, you remember this? You remember this? Yeah, I do. Yeah, it is fair. Now this absolutely solidifies that that wasn't the first try. When What's he was worse, on his back. that or Kanye West crossover? Ooh. I don't know. I like one of them more than I like the other. <laughs> Tough me to answer. 
do you question if this was good defense? Couldn't be, right? No chance. Oh! Oh! oh. I have seen this a million times today. And while it, it is crazy impressive, but I'm telling you, you see, there's a gym full of friends in there, okay? There's going to be one guy amongst that group that says, sure, I'll be the guy who gets dunked on, and you go and they make that video. Because clearly, this dude leaned on him and dunked on him and made it look that much worse. It was crazy impressive, but there's always going to be one guy who's willing to be the victim. Wait a minute, you got friends that are out here signing up to get dunked on? Because when I was a kid, wasn't nobody doing nothing when like you that. Were you were a kid. That just like, you know what? Hold on. Let me be the one that you bang on in the video. You know what I'm trying to be? The dude holding the camera. No, that was not good defense. In that case, the best defense is ducking your head and running away. When you were a kid, those videos weren't going to be on national hey. television. Now they are. That's exactly why you don't sign up for it. I want America to see me get dunked on. What are you kidding? Well, I don't know. It could have been worse. Good by the Husky Lasher. Oh, Find yeah. the back pass the other way. Yeah. Oh, that was right awesome. Oh. That was all bad. He went on a ride. Hey, man. I mean, sportsmanship is whatever. But number three, you got to walk back to that brick wall and tip him over backwards. You got to let people know that you're not going for this. Wow. I ain't about to give him no ride, though. Do you question if this could revolutionize cycling? What does that even mean? So far, no. Oh! Oh. He's, is he, what, what, what they call that a few years ago? Painful? Planking? Well, painful, yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I don't know where that seat is. He does that's appear to I'm figure something excited. out, though. Wow. Although I'm not sure that he's using less energy by doing that than he would by pedaling. That seems to exercise the core. He just passed the, the motorcycle up. Do the physics in this make sense? It also looks like you don't get much exercise out of that outside of the core, right? Yeah, it sounds like he's trying to win, though. Uh, I also would like to just acknowledge, because, you know, those of you who watch this show for a while probably feel like I do, I was hoping something would happen that would force that gentleman to fall off his bicycle. I'm a little bit disappointed that we got to the end and there was no catastrophic <laughs> yeah, injury. <laughs> That's nothing. Watch this. Your endless supply of videos. Oh, yeah, I remember this kid. I was hoping he would fall off his bike, too. Oh, he doesn't? By the way, the commentary is the best part of this video. <laughs> Swerve. And he turned and every he turned. Do you question how we got in this predicament? I mean, well, I didn't have a job, and I was trying to find somewhere to work. And Oh, <laughs> sorry, you're talking about something else. What do we have here? Me tengo. ¿Y ahora qué? ¿Estás haciendo video? Sí. ¿Cómo la vas a sacar? Bueno, no sé. Well, 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 Increíble. Well, don't pull that, let it go. <laughs> Bobby's trying to warn you. Oh. Anda, mírala. <laughs> Better get the hell out of there. Así nace una oveja. El milagro de la vida. <laughs> Eso se lo pones. Te lo juro que la gente joven que lo sabe. Así nace oh. Oh. una oveja de tierra. No es. But really, how did he get in that predicament? Did the grass just give birth? Do you know what the sheep said when he fell into that hole, right? Sheep. What? Sheep. Eh? What the sheep said? This is bad. So was that. So was worse, that. in fact. Highly questionable. This broadcast from the Clevelander Hotel on beautiful South Beach, Miami. Ring! No Lemon Studio, what's up? Who there? Who there? This rapping forte, who is this? Oh, this P. P? Yeah. P? <laughs> yeah. P, let me hear you say, oh, oh. <laughs> uh. Man, uh. yeah, no. My son TV show is presented by Modelo Especial, Brew with a fighting spirit since 1925. Time to play the game that has no soul. See?
Oh no. You tell us what to watch on TV, we'll tell you if we're intrigued or not. On the NFL Network, Cowboys and Seahawks. Yeah, I'm willing to pretend that the pretend football will be good enough for me. Des Bryant won't be playing tonight. He suffered a concussion, but here he is talking smack to defensive backs in practice. One of the Cowboys' biggest problems, by the way, is that Dez is correct. Israel, are you intrigued? I mean, he's 100%. He's not talking smack. He's telling truths. And, yes, I'm intrigued. At this point, I'll take fake football. I'll take Zeke Elliott. I'll take Dak Prescott. I'll watch all that like it meant something because, man, August is rough. Gonzo, are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued. Listen, looks like Tony Romo is going to have tough competition this year. You know, they got a guy there who kid in the block by the name of, the name of Dak Prescott. You know, that guy is on fire. That guy's a real deal. Tony, you better don't get hurt this year because if you got hurt, you're going to stay on the bench, buddy. Let's be clear. He is going to get hurt. It's just a matter of how long. But like Tony, Tony Romo, don't get hurt. Yeah, Pops, I'm trying. On MILB TV, the Arkansas Travelers and the Tulsa Drillers. Now, I'm good on that. It sounds like a border robbery of sorts. Tulsa's over toward that side of the state. They tell us we have an amazing catch here, though. And the pitch. Swing and a deep drive to right field. There she goes into the night. Into the night. <laughs> and that is a home. Oh! Are they Great saying catch. he caught it? Are they saying he caught that? He went over that the fence. Great catch. And caught it. My goodness. The right fielders. By the way, Green County Chevy got their money's worth out of that uh, that banner right there after they got on our television show. Israel, are you intrigued? No, no. He didn't even go over the high part of the fans. How is that a good catch? He only went over the short part of the fans. Come on, no. <laughs> it only took you four days to start sounding like a senile old man. Papa, are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued. But listen, I, they have to rewrite the rules, you know, the baseball rules, because that should have been a home run. The ball went over the fence. You know, he caught the ball, but the ball went over the fence anyhow. Thank you. So, I've been a proponent of that the whole time if the entire human and the baseball is on the other side of the fence that's a home run why does it matter how high the fence is the fence is there for a reason because it marks the home run when the ball and the player are on the other side yeah this show is here for a reason it's the opposite of hateration like what i'm getting from these two guys on sportsnet la giants and dodgers Going to be watching fake football. I was getting ready for baseball season, though. I was almost there. Here we go, though. Johnny Cueto at the plate. Rich Hill on the mound. That was not a good look, Johnny Cueto, who looks a lot shorter at the plate than he does on the mound, by the way. Tell me that Cueto, who has a lot of fun playing this game, decided to borrow an Ishiro attack. Not wow. quite easy, bro, is Aggressive. He? he was aggressive, though. Like, he decided he was going to be a pitcher when he was four years old. He's, like, never swung a bat before in his life. Israel, are you intrigued? Uh, I'm not at all intrigued. I, too, will be watching fake football. But Rich Hill, low-key, very good name for a pitcher. Low-key, I don't know anything about him. Uh, Gonzo, are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued. Police and Johnny, I got a piece of advice for you. If you want to improve your hit, then you got to call your buddy Bartolo Colon. You know, that guy can hit. <laughs> Yeah, he can run the bases. He's with the real package, you know? That's the guy you got to get a hold of. I'm saying, hey, Bartolo, can you give me a few tips? Bartolo Colon, 2016 fan favorite, is the most unexpected development in professional sports. We'd Run all have to agree. Run is a strong word for Bartolo. Run is not something he does. <laughs> Trot. <laughs> Tomorrow on TLC, Playhouse Masters. All right, apparently Steph Curry and family has a new addition in their backyard. What is it? Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my oh, goodness. <gasps> oh wow. A rocket horse. A dolly. Y'all serious? <laughs> what? Oh! There's a puppy! Riley, look. Get in there. Get in there and jump around. What? Oh! Where'd you go? Wow. Trust 
Did he put those whack curry two lows into the ball pit? Because if he did, I feel like he's disrespecting all the hard work. Uh, Israel, are you intrigued? I mean, yeah, I can't even say anything funny or mean. That's just adorable, and I wish every kid could have that type of playhouse. All right, Gonzo, are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued. Listen, I bought a playhouse for Dan in the backyard, but he couldn't fit in it. You know, he had to stay outside. Oh, goodness. <laughs> That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching. I hey, appreciate you joining us on ESPN2. We'll be back on the big network on Friday. See you mañana. You know, I really lie. Dan was able to get into the playhouse. He just couldn't get out. That's oh, all. Oh, that's so harsh.